good though. Actually, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? While we're doing that, I wonder if a couple of you have gotten to do this already. There's a few more blank forms on the table back there, and I'll try to remind you when we finish up tonight. Chad wants to put together a brochure to give out to encourage folks, and so you can give out about Global Camp this summer. And so I just, this what he sent me, I just put on a form and asked him to just fill out. Really, he's looking for quotes from Global Camp. So if you went, and I'll remind you when we finish up, there's a couple of blank forms on the table back there. If you just fill that out for him, and he'll put that together. We're, we got pictures of you already. We'll, we'll put a mugshot on there or whatever, and he's going to put that together so we can put them in your hands to give out to invite people to Global. So uh, if you would do that, please. All right. What did we talk about last week? Anybody? Somebody? Jesus, okay, yeah. All right. Well, what did we talk about? We talked about, I introduced you to a couple of new words that I had learned, and we didn't talk about creeper. So we talked about posing, right? All right. Posers. So I want to kind of finish that up tonight. We we, we kind of got started good on it last week. I had a few more thoughts I wanted to share on that with you this week. So I am down in front of you guys. But we, last week we, we talked about, we kind of tried to define what a poser was. You know, it's somebody who tries to fit into a specific social group. You know, and, and the whole premise of the idea is that, that you, you change who you are so you can fit in. And so when you're posing, that's what you're doing. And the thing is, is you do it for people you know, for your friends. You do it for people you don't know. And, and you also, you do it for people you don't even like. But yet, we, we have this mindset and this idea that it's something that we have to do. And the problem with it is, is you do it so long that pretty soon, you forget who you are. You know, who is the real you? And so we saw that that was a problem. And an even bigger problem is you do it for so long we pose in our spiritual life before God. And so we talked about that. And really, remember the big idea was, if I'm going to be who I'm supposed to be, then I've got to stop being who I'm not. If I'm going to be who I'm supposed to be, who God created me to be, then I've got to stop being who I am not. And so last week, the focus was on how, you know, how we pose. You know, we talked about, we, we made fun of Mason, how he's a, a big, tough guy here, but when he gets home, you know, he's, he's mama's boy. And that's okay. I was mama's boy, too. But, you know, and, 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 but, if, but if Mason acts all tough in here, and then at, at heart, he's just a, a big bear, you know, how, how does he know how to really act you know, when he gets around his friends, he, he's not sure who, who's the real one. You know, who's the real Mason? Please stand up. The, you know, the real one. <coughs> Excuse me. And, and girls, you, you, you think you, to fit in, you've got to dress a certain way. And then you figure out when you dress a certain way, you start to attract the attention of boys that you don't even like. <laughs> you know, but it, it kind of comes with it, right? And, and so you have to be careful with that. And we post things on Facebook. And, and if you're really honest with yourself, that's not who you really are. But yet you're trying to fit into this group. And we even looked in the Bible how there's stories about posers in the Bible. Who were they? What were they called? Pharisees. Remember we looked at that, a story about Pharisees and how they wore certain things to remind people of how holy and righteous we are. So just a little hint. If somebody says you're being Pharisaical or somebody calls you a Pharisee, that's not a good thing. So just, just remember that. And, and then kind of the last thing on, on what we talked about last week was we read Psalm 86, talking about a prayer of David. Remember, remember David prayed that, that, you know, unite my heart. That was David's prayer, is unite my heart so that my allegiance, my loyalties, the things that I care about aren't divided. You know, I don't live one way here and another way here. Because a divided heart... You know, it, 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 it just, it's not happy, it's not real, 
And, and, and what we found was that an undivided heart, when your heart is united before God, it won't live the divided lifestyle of posing that we're talking about. Well, that was the how. And so tonight I want to kind of talk about the why. Why do we do this? Why do we think it's necessary that we have to be somebody other than who we are? You know, why do we think it necessary that we need to pose before people and, and be something that we're not? You know, why? Well, well the, the, the number one reason, and I kind of touched on this last week, is, is for popularity, right? I mean, we all have this desire to fit in. That's just who we are. And, you know, right or wrong, that's who we are, you know? And, and you find out you're never popular enough. No matter what you do, you're never popular enough. You know, you're, you're, you're never good enough in sports. You know, you can get the latest LeBron James shoes, but that doesn't make you a basketball star, but yet it, it kind of makes you fit in. You know, or you're never good looking enough, or, or you're never rich enough. I mean, you know there's a whole industry that supports this habit of posing, and it's called the knockoff business. You know, if you really want to look like somebody, you can get a fake Rolex watch. And most people won't know the difference, but... It makes you look rich and important. You know, and so there's knockoffs for everything. Girls, y'all, so a lot of you probably, what is it, the, the fancy handbag, the, what do you call it? Beer, Beer Bradley. You can buy knockoff beers. Coach? Is that, oh, that's the new one now. I'm, what, a year behind? Okay. Okay. But, you know, and, and, and I, it's not like I don't know what you go through because y'all will find this hard to believe, but I had not always been the hippie and trendy guy that I am today. You know? I struggle with the same things you guys did when you go through it. And, and this is, everybody goes through this. And the thing is, some of us never outgrow it. You still, you know, we, you, you, you grow up and you don't get out of it that you still try to impress people. And oftentimes it's pre people you don't even like. You know, and, and the th here's the thing, with popularity, when you try to be popular, you can be confident about it. You know, you can be, you know, what is it, you're all there, and you've got all that, and you can swag your head, and you think you have it all, but the thing is, you're still fake, because that's not who you are. You know, so you can be as confident as you want, but you're still fake. And pretty soon, here's, here's one of the problems. Pretty soon, you start to believe that you're not good enough. Pretty soon, you start to believe that it's not just a matter of fitting in anymore. It's not just a matter of trying to be like somebody else. Pretty soon, you realize that, you know, I really, I'm just not as good as they are. And I just, I don't fit in. And that's the danger in all this, is you don't fit in. And it really it leads to the second reason for why we do all this, why we pose, is it's out of insecurity. You start to think that I have to do this, otherwise I'm... I'm nobody and I'm not important. And, and, and then you start to listen to what other people say about you. Because if you're not being real, your friend's going to pick up on this. And, and another problem with this is, think about this one now. Have you ever thought that the person you're trying to be like is not real either? And so it really kind of makes you wonder if you look around, who's real? You know, what is real? I don't even know who a real person is that I'm trying to be like. I'm trying to be like you, and you're not even the real you. And so we got all these copies and clones running around. Because remember, I asked you that last week. What would it be like? What would the world be like if everybody was just real? You know, this is how I rolled out of the bed this morning. This is me. That's what you get. What would the world be like? Wouldn't it be so much more fun if you could just be you? And not be somebody else who's not really somebody else because they're not them either. What would the world be like if we would all just do this and stop playing these games of comparing ourselves to everybody else? Proverbs 29, King Solomon writes, and this is a great proverb. He says, the fear of man lays a snare. And I'll explain that. The fear of man lays a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is safe. And you know what a snare is? A snare is like a trap. And so the fear of man is like a trap. The Message Bible writes it this way. He says, the fear of human opinion, which is what we're talking about, the fear of what other people think about me, is disabling. It's disabling, and then trusting in God protects me from that. 
So that's what that proverb says in, in today's language. The fear of human opinion disables. Trusting in God protects you from that. Now, have you ever been disabled? Do you know what that means? I don't mean disabled as in having a, a handicap. We, that's what we talk about, disability. But have you ever been disabled? When something is disabled, it no longer functions. You know, like, if, 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 say, say if the elevator breaks. And actually, we had somebody get stuck in the elevator, but because I picked on him all the time, I won't say who it was. And so once we got him out, we, we disabled the elevator because it was working, but we weren't sure if it was really working or not, so we put a sign on it, not in service. So we disabled the elevator. And so, and, but have you, ever, have you ever got that feeling before a big test and you, you realize that, uh-oh, I didn't study enough for this. <coughs> oh, no. But, but then it's too late because it's time to go to school and, you know, and if I don't pull out this grade, I'm toast. You know that feeling you get in your stomach and, and you get just all knotted up inside? and that, you, it, it, it freezes you. It paralyzes you. You just get disabled over it. And that's what, that's what Solomon is talking about. Because when we fear what other people think about us, we just get all tied up inside. And we get to where we can't function. We can't live. We can't have fun. We can't enjoy life because we're so worried about what other people think. What does he say? But when you trust in God and who you are, you don't have to worry about that. What a great truth for today that when you trust in God and who you are and who he created you to be, you don't have to worry about it. And it raises the question, is it really worth it? Is it really worth going through all that? Or would I rather just be me and enjoy life? What, what is it? And do you, ever, do you ever find yourself posing and doing these things to impress other people and then you realize, I don't even know why I'm doing this because I don't really even like them. Because, and you'll find that, that you may think they're cool and so you'll act a certain way so you can, you know, kind of infiltrate their little posse and, you know, and then you find out that I don't really even like them. But you so created that image in who you are that you don't know how to get out of it. You know, you've created this person that you're not and probably done some things that you wouldn't normally do and now you don't know how to get out of it. And you find yourself stuck. And then you, and then you have to, to, to keep up that. You have to continue doing things that you wouldn't normally do. And, and, and before long, you find yourself doing these things. And that's a, life is a lot like that. That when you make up your mind, I'm not going to do something anymore because you know it's wrong, you know it's sinful, and then you still do it. Y'all remember that passage? I think we've, we've touched on it before in here. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. This kind of sums it up. This is that, that passage in Romans where Paul says, you know, I know what the right thing to do is, and I really want to do it, but I just can't. You know, I try hard, and I can't. And he kind of sums it up. He says, for I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing that I hate. You know, that's because that's because even though we're saved, if, if you're a believer in Christ, even though you have new life and you're a new creation, that old sin nature's still in there. And it's an ongoing battle of, of who's going to have control over the way you live. And listen, listen how the Message Bible sums this up. He says, my decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. You know, I make a decision to do good. I make a decision to not pose and not be this way anymore. And then the minute I get to school, I start doing it again. He says, something is going wrong deep within me, and it gets the better of me every time. I try. 